Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Minnesota State Park Hiking Club Trail Series. Today, we traveled to Jordan, Minnesota to continue our adventure all along the hiking club trails. The trail at Minnesota Valley State Recreation Area is approximately four miles in length, and it took us about an hour and a half to complete. There's actually three separate areas that are considered a part of the park. The first area is slightly north along the Minnesota River from Belle Plaine. The sec second portion is around Louisville Swamp in the center of the Minnesota Valley National Wildlife Refuge. And the final portion is in the River Valley between Chaska and Shakopee. The Minnesota Hiking Club Trail is in the first section down by Belle Plaine. The area began as a state trail when it was authorized in 1969. The trail began to take shape but it wasn't until 1994 that it was designated a state recreation area and provided some additional federal protections by virtue of its connection to the Minnesota Valley National Wildlife Refuge. The history of the Minnesota River Valley is an impressive and extensive one. The valley was home to the Dakota and Sioux people, and numerous areas along the river still bear their names. Shakopee, or the name of the river itself, Minnesota, for example. In addition to that, the rivers provided the easiest form of transportation, so towns grew up around it, only to be abandoned once the railroads became the primary form of transportation. So there are remnants of this history and the towns within the recreation area. The State Park Hiking Club Trail begins at the Trail Center and heads off immediately towards Beeson Lake. The first section of the trail is a forested area, but the forest gradually gives way to a lightly forested area near Beeson Lake. After you first encounter Beeson Lake, the trail splits and there's an option, though not part of the State Hiking Club Trail, for you to go to the Minnesota River, which is a short distance through the woods. Throughout the trail, there's wildlife and evidence of wildlife. At the first hint of water, we saw four swans, and later down the trail, we saw a significant evidence of a beaver population in the park. There were a few additional swans we saw during the hike, in addition to the early ones, Along the water, we spotted several turtles, which um, also spotted us and quickly dove beneath the surface before we could get a proper identification. After the forested and watered water's edge portion of the trail, the trail splits once more, this time opening up to a large prairie field. If it's a sunny summer day, you'll be glad you put on sunscreen as there's virtually no trees along the trail for this portion of the hike. And although it's not exceptionally extensive, it's long enough to get a decent sunburn if it's sunny, if it's a sunny summer day. Fortunately, or unfortunately, the day we hiked it, it was extremely cloudy, but fortunately, not rainy. After the prairie section, you cross the road and return to the forest, albeit a sparser and partially prairie forest. It's not a particularly busy road, but it's always a good thing to ensure any little hikers stay close, since out in the wilderness, you can never really be too sure. I once had a fisher cat run right next to me while I was on a hike with my kids at Mine Falls in Nashua, New Hampshire. Fortunately, it kept running, but uh, I ensure that they are much closer than I <laughs> had ensured they were prior to that encounter. Consistently through the hike, the terrain remains flat and a relatively easy hike. The prairie section does contain some uneven terrain with the occasional hole or low spot, but on average it too remains flat. This is to be expected as the recreation area is in a valley near the Minnesota River and the underbrush is low despite the forest not being ancient, likely due to the flooding from the river clearing out the underbrush in the spring. After crossing the road, there's a grave site shortly off to the right for a Francis M. Strait, first wife of George Strait, who was a three-term mayor of Shakopee. Its location is peculiar and I couldn't find any reference as to why his first wife would be buried way out here. Perhaps it was a homestead or a favorite spot? Unknown. The trail loops back where the trail split in a shorter, almost tall underbrush type forest with minimal shade as the trail is too wide to allow a canopy to grow over it. My favorite part of the trail is the section along the water in the first area. There were several swans and the thick grass didn't allow you to get close, but kind of flavored the wilderness scene. The beavers gnaws at the base of trees or the chewed stumps really gave more character to the scene. And the place really felt like wilderness that it had been preserved to be. Whereas some parks, you know, they're kind of more urbanized or have cages. I mean, for good reason, don't get me wrong. No one wants a buffalo right next to them without some restraint. But uh, it does take away from the wilderness feel when they have that. 
but this recreation area really gives that wilderness feel and I, and I really love it so very much and hey who doesn't love seeing turtles sunning themselves on a log thank you for watching and if you like this video don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons also make sure you check out the rest of the trails in this hiking challenge on our channel